our model. Now we trained our model, we solved it, we found our optimal W given an available data set. So this is the data set that we have. It has n samples, okay? So what we will use, leave one out, cross-validation to train the linear regressor. So let's look at this case. What do we have? We have different points and I'm considering that here uh, this point we will mask it because we will leave it out, right? I'm masking that point. I'm taking it as a testing subject. I'm leaving it out and we're going to optimize to find our loss function, optimize it, find the W. So how do we do that? Same thing, but there is something that changes here. So what is the number oops, what is the number of our training samples? N minus one. Very good. So now in the first run, we're optimizing our model and we have N minus one. Okay? And same for the second summation, n minus 1, because we are taking only training subjects, right? Now, how many times I'm going, we're going to run this, if we're doing leave one out, how many opt, how many W stars we will find? How many models we will build? N. Very good. So we have N models. Why? Because, uh, let's say, in the first run, we're masking this point, but in the second run, the you know, we will mask another point, so the, the line will change. So I will explain this more uh, for you guys. So after, I'll, after we uh, build our model, we want to predict on the testing subject that we left out. So how do we do that? What should, we, what should I write here? So this is my testing subject, the feature vector for my testing subject x uh, test. And I would like to predict its uh, value. So here I pretend that I don't see the ground truth, right? So, but I want to predict it because I built the model. So the prediction will be exactly this guy. So Y test prediction. So what is the Y test prediction here? So let's maybe put it, like, keep it consistent. I put a hat, right? It's equal to... So, yes, but in this case, we have uh, a high dimensional space, so it's a dot product. So we need to do x test transpose times the vector w plus the b that we estimated from the previous model using what? Using our n minus 1 samples. Okay? Great. So uh, now, how to evaluate this? How can we possibly evaluate this? So remember, we want to minimize this distance. So an evaluation metric for, as an evaluation metric, we can use what we call the MSE, the mean squared error. And this is exactly the distance between our prediction and the ground truth squared, right? So our loss function, but we normalize it, okay? We divide by the number of samples. So why we have n here? Can anyone tell me why we have n and it's not n minus 1? Sorry? Normalizing the number of samples. But when I compute the mean squared error, do I compute it for only one, you know, left out subject? No, for all subjects. And we use leave one out. So we have n subjects in total. So we're, I'm going to compute the error for each individual prediction in you know, for each individual prediction and sum them all up, okay? And then normalize them by the number of subjects. So here, here is a question. So what if, for example, we leave three subjects out? Or what if we lose, for example, um, five-fold cross-validation and not leave one out? Do you guys think that we will have the MSE, yes or no, and why? Okay, so this is an important question. If you get this right and you can explain it right, you get all of machine learning. Not all, okay, I'm exaggerating, but most of it. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a hint. So let me look at, um, we, we have the W star. Hmm. 
I'm gonna put So the MSE depends on what? Depends on this guy. So now I'm just going back to the compact form, right, to make things easier. So we can do it this way, okay? So here I can write it if it's in, in its compact form. I'm going to change everything a bit and remove the plus B, right? And we have this nice difference. Okay, the MSE depends on what? On the W star, right? On the W star. So, the W star depends on what? Training samples, right? So every time we change our training samples, right? We take different training samples, we do a different partition, our W will change because it our W is derived from two things, from the feature vectors of our training samples on, and from their corresponding training target scores, okay, the YI. So what do you have in this equation? You have a bunch of YIs and you have the features, the features and the, and, and, and the scores, right? So if we change the, the, the training samples, our W will change. So if our W changes, our score will change. Okay, so I'll explain it more. So if you compute this, generally you wouldn't get exactly the same, uh, the same uh, MSE. So let's look at cross-validation and I will walk you through the steps. So let's say that this is our data and we have our input X, our target Y. And we have a bunch of points. So I'm going to do a three-fold cross-validation. So let's say oops. okay, three-fold cross-validation. So we have here Fold one, I randomly divided my data into different folds. Okay, so this is random uh, partition of the data. Then let's say in the first scenario, oops, where is the image? Oops. Okay, so in the first scenario, I will completely uh, remove the fold one. So fold one, all the, the blue subjects will be left out for testing. So what will I have in this case? So if I leave them all out, I'm just going to mask them and build a model. So if I build the model, my linear regression will look something like oh, this is too low. Okay, something like this. Okay, so this is my line. So we have our optimal W tilde, right? Which has, remember, B star, W star. Okay, now if we want to test our model, we, will, we have trained our model and we will test on those subjects. So I'm going to take those, copy, paste them here. What do you guys notice? That the prediction of those points, they're not very good, right? They're far away from the line. Because you can see that in this case, if I'm predicting for this point, I will get this prediction, but the ground truth was right there. Okay, so now I'm going to leave another fold out. So let's say I'm leaving uh, the second fold out. So this fold out. Okay, and then I will build my model. So look, so this is my model. What do you guys know? This model completely changes. 
So the model can easily be changed by the affected by the training set you're using to train it. Okay, so this is important. So this is your new model. Now I am testing on these subjects. So I'm predicting for how many at the same time for four subjects. Okay, so here you can see for this prediction we have the model actually does not really approximate it's far away. Okay, so basically when you use uh, cross-validation because you're building many models and because each model is being influenced by the training set you're selecting it for training it, then the, uh, the, its evaluation on unseen data will be different. So if I use, for example, leave one out in this case, so I leave one subject out and I build a model, then my model will be better. So you can see, like, if I'm using leave one out, it, it will always be slightly good. So if I'm leaving another guy from here, so this new approximation nicely fits also the yellow ones, okay? So you can see that leave one out might give me a better MSC, a lower error than using threefold cross validation on this training set, okay? By just looking at this scenario. So how do we evaluate it? So you guys need to keep in mind, if we do, for example, k-fold cross validation, in the first case, let's say, and we do leave one out. So I'm going to explain these two cases. So for the leave one out, let's say I leave a random subject out. I have its target test, for example, subject one out. I have its ground truth value, and I'm predicting by my model its, uh, its y test one predicted. Okay, and then I do this for the second subject. So I leave, uh, I, I will leave a second subject out randomly. Y test maybe two. Okay, Oops. and then I will predict it using my model. So, of course, the model is not the same. Now you guys know that the model trained using this. So the W star of model one is different from the W star of model two just by looking at this example. So I'm going to do this for all my subjects, right? So all my subjects, so this is the ground truth, what we call the target score vector, and this is the predicted score vector, okay? Then I will compute simply the MSE between these two guys. So the squared error. Now if I do cross-validation k-fold, it means I'm predicting for a bunch of guys all together at the same time. So let's say I leave randomly subject number 10, subject number 20, okay, and subject number 1. I, I leave them all out and all of those guys are my testing samples. Then what I need to do, I need to train my model and I will test it on all those guys one by one and predict. So here what I have I have one model for the first fold, okay, and I will predict using this one model, okay, these guys in the first fold, and here we have the Y10, Y20, Y1, and these are my predictions for all these testing subjects, for example, in this fold, okay, right, then I do it again, so the next fold, this is fold one, so I'm predicting by fold, so this is fold one, and I do this for fold two, so I'll have another prediction. So different, uh, different testing subjects. And by the end, we'll have the same thing. By completing all folds, I will predict, oops, let me use the other color. So I will predict for all n subjects and compare with the ground truth scores of my n subjects, okay? so. To compute the MSE, you can compute what we call the overall or global overall MSE across all folds. So you stack them all up uh, and you compare these two vectors. Or what you can possibly do is evaluate for each fold independently. Okay, So you can compute the MSE of fold 1 plus MSE of fold 2 by comparing these vectors alone. Okay, Right? And you have, I don't know, k-fold, so MSE for fold k, and you normalize and divide by k-folds. Okay, so that's one way. So you can report uh, 
the average and also standard deviation of these values. Any questions, guys? Is it clear? Do you have... This is important. If you get this clearly in your head, you understand that your W depends on your training set, right? So here in this case, the training set. Uh, that's why you, can, you wouldn't have the same MSEs and uh, your, your performance will fluctuate. If you use different cross-validation techniques, you will generally not get exactly the same performance if you're using leave one out versus fivefold. Okay.